What is going on everybody? Welcome to another episode of Recommendation List. Initially I was thinking about this series as something leaning towards games of B category that can be easily overlooked. But here I am telling you about Diablo 4. The catch is I'm not going to spend too much time on Diablo 4 itself in this video. You've probably already heard enough about this game from way bigger channels and long long ago. It is unlikely I would be able to change your mind about this game overall. What I want to try to change is your mind about hardcore mode. Mode is so much feared and overlooked by many players because of its absolute brutality and unforgiveness. But in my opinion it shouldn't be. In this video I'm going to give you my thoughts on why Diablo 4 Hardcore is awesome and also how to approach it to have more fun. Quick background, I have never been a huge fan of Diablo 2 and 3 Endgame, and Diablo 4 didn't change my mind about it. It is okay, but it creates a feeling of a chore way too soon for me. Because of that, Diablo 1 was always my favorite of the bunch. But even though I have the same problem with the Diablo 4 Endgame as with Diablo 2 and 3, what sets it aside is a massive campaign worth exploring on its own. And to be clear, what I am recommending here is finishing the campaign on the hardcore. I will get back to why later. So what hardcore brings on the table? It forces you to approach the game in a very different way. The vast majority of the players playing on softcore will rush through the game to reach the endgame content as soon as possible, so they can have their crazy builds with their damage numbers going absolutely off the charts to join cool guys. Huge mistake in my opinion, but the easy one to make. Even World Tier 2 will not be challenging enough to slow down the players and immerse them in the green world of Sanctuary. You pretty much right click through the enemies, you face the boss, sure you may die a couple of times especially if you tackle an optional dungeon boss in early stages where you don't have some essential skills yet. But in the end of the day, you just brute force your way through everything with the speed where all surroundings left blurry. And this is where hardcore mode comes in. This twist where the player character's death is permanent will inevitably slow players down. It makes you carefully think about your next move, encourages you to stay on the safer side, calculate the risk of going to the unknown location and when you inevitably fail risk assessment at some point or encounter some unaccounted random event, looking at you butcher, you will get an adrenaline rush a normal game simply incapable to deliver. Because of that, on hardcore Diablo engages players with some mechanics much earlier than on the softcore, increasing the depth of the game system from the beginning. For instance, item upgrades. On softcore you don't really need to think about upgrading your items pretty much till you enter the late game. You slice through the game and get better gear with such a phenomenal speed that all the way to roughly level 40 upgrading items just doesn't make sense. It consumes too much resources and time. It is simply more effective to run to the next quest or dungeon and you probably will get something better. On the hardcore it's a different story. Diablo 4 is scaling with your character level, not with item level, so naturally upgrading your gear gives you a bit of an edge, and when this edge is the difference between life and death of your character, you go and upgrade your gear, especially if you are not sure what awaits you around the corner. As I said on softcore, I started upgrading items around level 40, so if you are interested in just finishing the game, you might almost completely miss this mechanic. On Hardcore I became actively engaged in the item upgrade system around level 20. Level 20 is not halfway to level 40, more like a quarter. Another mechanic is those XP potions. They have different bonuses, extra armor, resist, damage against certain types of enemies, etc. But on Softcore I was just using the one I have handy just to get this XP boost. And I never never came back to craft some of them. As you may guess, hardcore changes things. Whenever I was getting into previously uncharted territory or boss I never experienced before, I wanted to give my character as many chances of survival as possible. So I was trying to choose the best potion for what is coming. 
I also was trying to preserve some of stronger potions, like the one that gives 900 armor, for situations like this. And of course, the stash. On softcore, you don't care about your stash till late game. You can finish the entire campaign, become level 40 or even 50, and you will be absolutely okay with no extra tabs purchased for the stash. On hardcore, stash is the single best investment of your money in the game from the very beginning. You see, on the hardcore, you will inevitably die. You can just start anew and go through the same struggles with your new character. Or you can have already upgraded gear from your previous character stashed in your chest for different levels. This will create an extra element of meta progression for your account on top of Renown and Altars of Lilith. For example, my Force Barbarian died on level 24, and thanks to the stash I got back to this level in just a bit over 2 hours. This is just a pick of things that change when you play hardcore, and all of it vastly increases immersion into sanctuary and enjoyment of the game. Every choice you make has so much more weight, so much more at stakes, you get so much dopamine that I bet if you give Diablo 4 Hardcore to gambling addicts, they will just get hooked and will never look back at slot machines. Not saying gaming addiction is good, but it's objectively less harmful than gambling with real money. Couple of words why I recommend specifically going through campaign and do not recommend end game on Hardcore. First of all, Diablo 4 at this stage does not share the map between characters. And it is a shame, even though Renown is shared, having a map closed in the end game is very annoying. Altars of Lilith bonuses are kept, but you don't know which one you already discovered unless you keep the track of it somewhere else. Devs promised to fix this, but it's not done at the moment of recording of the video. Second, grinding experience of the end game is not for everyone in general. But even if it is for you, the truth is, you will find yourself running on autopilot more and more often. And this is where you die. Dying from flawed strategy is one thing. It is sad, but in the way it could be exciting. Because you address the mistakes and try again, very likely succeeding now. This is a likely scenario of death during the campaign. Dying because not being able to pay attention for long enough because of the repetitive nature of the endgame content is a very different story. There is no conceptual flow in your strategy that you can fix, no skill you can improve. Hardcore death in the endgame usually is demotivating, at least for me. My advice, finish the story in hardcore to get most of it, and if you are up for some endgame grind and stuff, Create a softcore character. You won't have your hardcore gold and things, but even without it, 1 to 50 can be done in just under 5 to 6 hours easily. There are plenty of guides on YouTube on how to do it. Those are the points I wanted to make, and to increase chances of your enjoyment of hardcore, I would like to share some tips with you. Tip number one your character is going to die. You miscalculate the risk, game lags, you sneeze at the wrong moment, it's going to happen, probably more than once. So you need to set your mind right and make the peace with it before you start. Otherwise, you absolutely won't have a good time. And to do it is to understand what actually constitutes your power level on the hardcore mode. In a softcore or any other RPG game, your power is the power of your character, and losing it, it could be devastating. What you want to focus on is your meta progression. On hardcore, you are not as powerful as your most powerful character. You are as powerful as your stash. Your character died? Well, did they boost your renown? Did they open new Elders of Lilith? Did they add new items in the stash? If yes, you are going forward, not backwards. And this brings to the second tip. Topic I was dancing around for a bit, managing your stash. It's actually pretty simple. Whenever you find better gear, stash the previous one so it can be used by the next character. 
This makes upgrading gear even more important because it's not just for this character, it is a heritage you will pass through all your characters. As the rule, I have the gear for roughly every 5 to 7 levels in the stash, and I come back to change it based on the level requirements of the main weapon. Basically, I look up when I will be able to use my next main weapon in the stash, and this is where I come back to town and change my gear. Play on World Tier 1. If you really want to challenge yourself, sure you can play World Tier 2, but there is absolutely no reason for that. Hardcore makes the game challenging enough even on World Tier 1, and boost of XP for World Tier 2 compared to World Tier 1 is simply not worth it. I think Hardcore plus World Tier 1 will give you maximum enjoyment of the game. Focus on defense in your build, and when I'm saying defense, I mean armor, damage reduction and max HP. Self-sustain is nice, but you can pick it up later, because self-sustain is not going to save you from one-shots, and one-shots is how you're going to die most of the time. Get Aspect of Protector as soon as possible. This is pretty much the only legendary aspect I needed to finish the campaign, but it is hard to say how many times it saved my Rs. It is by far the best early game defensive aspect, and really the only one you will need till level 40 or so. Of course, don't forget the Potions of Death Evasion and the Scroll of Escape to get out of sticky situations. And this is it. I hope I could convince some of you to give Diablo 4 Hardcore a shot, because finishing the campaign on the Hardcore was the best part of my Diablo 4 experience. Like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.